I want to thank you for joining us for another episode of Marking the Times. Um, I appreciate so much uh, you taking time to watch this uh, video blog every week and, and telling your friends about it and sending in questions on our Facebook page. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world today uh, really related to, to Bible prophecy, to end time prophecy, but I want to take a, a moment to answer a question that was sent in. I think everybody will find this question interesting and helpful. Um, the, the person asked this question, he says, why is the devil portrayed as a snake in the Garden of Eden? Is it literal? If so, why was he cursed to crawl on his belly when it's what snakes already do? What does it mean to eat of the fruit? Is it literal fruit uh, or, or something that was, uh, was something that was impressing them? Um, I want to know if there's more to this than meets the eye because it's not making a lot of sense to me. Well, I, I think probably a lot of us can share that uh, sentiment of that question because a lot of times some of these things don't make a lot of sense to us and we're trying to understand you know, what they mean for us today. Um, just one thing I want to mention I think is important when it comes to interpreting the first couple chapters of Genesis. Really how we interpret those early chapters of Genesis really kind of sets the stage for how we interpret the rest of the Bible. And some people in those early chapters of Genesis get into a lot of symbolic kind of allegorical interpretation or see these as just uh, uh, mythology. And I think when we do that, we're setting a dangerous precedent really for our um, interpretation of the rest of the Bible. So my view is when we're back in Genesis 1 and 2, we want to use the same grammatical, historical, literal method of interpretation that we're going to use through the rest of the Bible that we use all the way through uh, to the end of the book of Revelation. So when the person asks, is, is the, the fruit literal of the tree? I take it that it is. You know, God gave uh, uh, Adam and Eve the ability to eat of the fruit of any of the trees of the garden. But he says, of the fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. From the day you eat of it, you'll surely die. So there's nothing in the text to indicate anything other than literal, literal trees, a literal garden and a literal fruit uh, that was eaten from that tree. Now, it's often pictured as an apple. You know, Adam and Eve take a bite of the apple. We don't know that it was an apple, but it certainly was some fruit that was on the tree. Now, when we come to the question of Satan, that gets a little bit more complicated because people want to know, well, what's this relationship between Satan and this serpent? Now, Satan makes his entrance on the stage in human history in Genesis chapter 3. And I won't take time to read this in Genesis 3, 1 through 6, but he appears as a tempter and the deceiver of man. And after the fall of Adam and Eve, God cursed each of the key players in the fall. Let me read this from Genesis 3, 14 and 15. It says, The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you've done this, cursed are you more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field, and on your belly you will go. Dust you will eat all the days of your life. I will do enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He will bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. And of course, this is often called the Proto-Evangelium or the, the first gospel where it's promised there's going to come a redeemer, a deliverer, this head crusher, who's going to ultimately come and crush the head of Satan. Now, Genesis 3 doesn't mention uh, the devil or Satan by name or, or call him Satan, but other passages like Revelation chapter 12 make it clear here that the serpent is a reference uh, to Satan or to the devil. Now, this narrative here raises a lot of questions because people wonder, is this all, you know, Satan appearing as a sermon, is this all just derived from pagan mythology? Or did Satan transform himself into a serpent to disguise himself? Or did he actually inhabit an actual serpent? Um, I believe this passage is real history. It's not mythology. Uh, there's nothing in the, the setting of this passage to indicate that it's mythological. And uh, other, New Testament, uh, other accounts in the New Testament seem to uh, give us the idea that the account of Adam and Eve in the garden is historical. We see that in Matthew uh, chapter 19 and John 8, 44. Um, other passages of Scripture refer to Satan embodying other creatures. Uh, Satan seems to embody the, the king of Babylon in Isaiah 14. He seems to embody the prince of Tyre in Ezekiel 28. Satan's going to embody the Antichrist someday. And so what I think we have here is that Satan comes and he embodies this creature, the serpent, as he comes to uh, deceive Eve. Now, people will say, well, serpents, they'll crawl on their belly. Well, what that tells us is evidently in the beginning they didn't. Um, Henry Morris, in his commentary on uh, the book of Genesis, says that, you know, it's possible that the serpent at that time had a very rigid vertebrae that allowed it to stand, uh, stand erect. So we know that it crawls on its belly now. That was the curse, which means evidently before that time, the serpent did not. Um, it's kind of interesting. Henry Morris even says that it's possible, he believes, that maybe before the fall, animals even talked. 
because he says, you know, that obviously Eve wasn't surprised by the fact that a serpent was talking to her. And of course, we have no idea if that's true or not, but we certainly know that the serpent was an erect uh, animal. And of, of course, what happens is, is that God comes and curses Satan and the serpent. Now, people say, well, why does God curse the serpent if Satan just embodied that creature? You know, that creature had nothing to do with, with, with this temptation that took place. And uh, many b believe, and I think it's true, that the curse on the snake was a picture or foreshadow of what God will ultimately do to Satan. So through the curse, God was basically saying to Satan, if you want to impersonate a snake, so be it. But I'm going to change the character of that proud snake now to a lowly animal uh, that's going to be considered lowly and subjugated. And that the descendant of Eve one day is going to come and crush your head and crush the head of that serpent. So whatever all the ins and outs and the answers are to all the specifics of this text, one thing I want to emphasize, we can be sure that Satan is real. I mean, he's a real being, and in his first temptation, he used a disguise to make his temptation more palatable. And I mean, he's still the master deceiver today, and deception is still his calling card. And so you and I need to equip ourselves and put on the full armor of God every day uh, so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, God bless you. We hope to see you next time. Have a good week.